I'm gonna climb it. I'm gonna get a better advantage. Oh, okay, so it hits. Three vials of acid appear in his hand, and he clenches them in his fist and throws them. I'm just gonna attack, and you take care of the fire. Steven, see if you can help the horses. He bites you, and his teeth kind of just rebound. (laughs) (laughs) If only there was a convenient sign that said, please avoid the spider tree. Kieran, get invisible. Go get some fire. I guess he ate something that didn't agree with him. Please. Kraloth, please. Welcome back to Dice Shame. This is episode 52, In a Bad Way. MVP this week is Jonathan Hennisdor, who donated a whopping $500 to our Extra Life campaign in support of Sick Kids Hospitals. Thank you, Hennisdor. Thank you so much. Speaking of thanks, Canadian Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and I wanted to sincerely thank our community. We have a wonderful crew of folks socializing with us on Discord and Facebook. We've just started a book club, have been running weekly community games of Jackbox and Among Us, and are currently putting together a holiday gift exchange. Head over to our website for all the social links. All right, should we get down to business? Let's do it. Woo! So, Justin, you just got back from a camping trip. I would love to hear all about it. I would love to tell you. He's got his tent right behind him. He's dragging it in. (laughs) I've been eager. I've been eager to tell you guys about it. Um, You went to Algonquin, right? Went to Algonquin, Kiosk Lake in the Northwest. uh, Oh, that's amazing. That's a national um, park, isn't it? No, it's not. It's it's a provincial park. Oh. Um, But yeah, it was great. It was the first camping trip. Backcountry camping. 10 kilometers mm. off of the mm. load in point and um, oh, awesome. one has like a 1.3 kilometer portage, just one nice. line. Nice. Wow. 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 It was pretty incredible because this is the first time that I've gone camping and felt like, you know, I was responsible okay. for It's on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. you did the organizing oh, yeah. and stuff. Ah, yeah. Oh, shit. Yes. If something yeah. goes wrong, I'm deal. the one that has to run to the nearest hospital. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And so planning all of that stuff out. And I borrowed a ton of stuff from my mom and from my roommate. Mm-hmm. Nice. And um, um, my partner did a lot of cooking and um, preparation. But there was the, the biggest thing was just knowledge. Like, yeah. I need yeah. to learn how to tie down the canoe. I need to learn what yeah. to, what happens if yeah. you know, she has an allergic reaction to something. Rob, you also went camping at Algonquin, didn't you? Yeah, we, we went to Algonquin a couple of weeks ago, too, yeah. Oh, yeah, where did you guys yeah. go? That's wild. Uh, we did Coon Lake is where we stayed. Uh, so it's right on that main highway that sort of cuts through the middle of it. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, but it's it's I found it really interesting because it's... Uh, there's a, there's a ton of really fascinating trails there and they give you these little zines to like go walk through them and all the like really, you know. That's so indie. Main trails. Where oh, it's nice. super like weirdly indie where you pay $2 and then you walk through all the signposts and as you're walking around, they're like, we're going to teach you about rocks or we're going to teach you about yeah. bogs. And so you sort of have this thing. Like a like, nerd. Oh man, it was. The, I I wish all of wilderness was annotated. Is is really how uh, I how I feel? Yeah, yeah, little tags. I have such a distinct memory of being a girl guide and being like at a national or a provincial park, and there being a park ranger there with all me and my girl guide friends, like clumped around this probably teenager. Honestly, <laughs> and he was like telling us all about how porcupines defend themselves <laughs> from like wild animals. They and do how, dances, don't they? Yeah, like yeah, dances? they move. Around so that their bud is always facing the threat. Oh, my, my favorite one. So the, there's the beaver pond there, and this little zine that they give you is all like a takedown on beavers. They're like, you think beavers are so fucking smart? Well, they're just dumb animals <laughs> driven by instinct. <laughs> Fuck you, beavers. Uh-huh. Beavers are stupid. And then it like goes through to be like, you think you think beavers build interesting shit? No, they just react when they hear running water and shove sticks yeah. towards it. You like beavers? Fuck you. I don't like that. They're all over. They they just wanted people to know that don't personify beavers. They're just dumb animals. Yeah, will prove it. Yeah. And it was like really interesting to walk through this park and be like, have them pointed out it was that's actually very interesting and very very smart in a sense you know what i mean because people do personify them they build huts but they're not like oh let's go have fucking tea in our hut they literally are doing what you're saying they're like instinctively what? blocking up ponds they don't make tea mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they cause problems you know it's true I learned a really sad thing about beavers, which is that like their front teeth grow constantly, but their molars don't. And so Mm. they can't actually digest food once they use, like they grind down their teeth until they're all gone. Oh no. And then they starve to death is how 
if they don't die from predators, beavers starve to death because the teeth that they use for actually eating get worn down from how much they use their front teeth. Whoa. There you go. You think you like beavers? Fuck you. They're dumb. They die. Beaver fact podcast. How can we use that as a metaphor with them being our national animal? Die before your time. It's about capitalism. Just grind us down. Canadians (laughs) starve to death. Sounds like you guys had two very different camping experiences. One was like... You know, a little bit, no, and and no offense to to you, Rob. It just sounds like it wasn't as hundred percent. We were we were car camping, and even then, like we yeah we uh, we got there, and it's we started raining on us while we were setting it up, and it was man, Ooh. it was the most demoralizing first day oh, of like raining cats 100%. and dogs. Where you got half the tent out, and all the food and everything no. scattered around the campground, and like yeah, man, yeah. that it. Ugh. Rob and Rach were exercising their brains, though. What? Were, what about beavers? Were we? we from all the zine. We did learn uh, stuff. It was pretty good. Uh, what what would you what would you say your survival skill level is at now that you finished that trip? I mean, better than it was. So you leveled up. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll from take like that. a one Not, to a two, or yeah. Well, we'll we'll, we'll go at two to a three there was there was a lot of interesting learning to build shelter out of tarps and rope that happened now that sounds like nature i remember one time i was trying to set up a campsite in the rain and i climbed up into a tree to secure a tarp so that it would like drape over the tent because the fly was not gonna deal with the amount of rain coming down yeah and i was in the tree being thrown a rope and then I realized that the tree trunk and the limbs of the tree that I was holding onto and standing on were entirely covered in spiders. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> that, now that's a D moment stand of there. Yeah. Oh shit, here's the and spider secure swarm. The rope. Damn. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like I thought you were gonna say was... lightning, which is my worst fear. <laughs> and she died. And Joe died. I'm a ghost. If only there was a convenient sign that said, please avoid the spider tree. Honestly, though, but if you tell me what kind of spiders they are and what they were hunting, <laughs> and I could just look at them and be really interested in them, I would feel less afraid of them. I got bit by a spider the other day. It was like one of these little tiny spiders <laughs> that I picked off the wall. And I went to squish it, but I didn't squish it uh, fast enough. And it actually bit me. And I was like... My- <laughs> Wow, I don't think I've ever been bit. I, my favorite part of that anecdote was, you know, a spider that I picked off the wall, as if <laughs> picking off the spider off the wall was a completely normal part of everybody's. You know, you just go <laughs> pick a spider off the wall. You can do it anytime. So last time, you guys hear something moving around in the middle of the night. Jack sends Kieran out to investigate, and he sees some large forms. Everyone runs outside. You're in your jammies. Everyone roll for initiative. Uh, ho! Natural 20. Hey, hey way to go, Jack. Right. Yeah, I get to roll so few dice, this mm. one is happening. All right, Jack, what'd you get? Jack got a 24. Woo! Red. Red's got 11. Oh, yikes. I haven't seen you have such a bad initiative in a long time. Are you still feeling okay, Red? What do you mean? Where are we? Point me in the direction. Kraloth. 12. And Doran. Uh, five. Would you like B to be joining us? I mean, she's her own mind. I highly doubt she would be waiting in the room. Sure. Is this a two-level inn? It is. All right, Jack, it's your turn. You're out front of the inn. You're hearing some terrified horse noises from around the backside of the inn. Nay. What do you do? Seeing Doran doesn't have his armor on, Jack steps up behind him and just channels all of that feeling of the time he was turned to stone by the stone giant and puts that into his hand and then touches his hand to Doran and turns Doran skin to stone. Oh, wow. What does that do for my armor class? Uh, nothing to your armor class, but you now have resistance to damage. Nice. So you're, everything is half damage. Everything's half. So while you guys are unarmored, your AC is 10 plus your dexterity. Yeah. Yeah. So I touch Doran, turn his skin to stone, and then run west around the the end to try and get around to the far side. Mm. Kraloth, as Jack reaches forward and enchants your friend Doran, you hear the terrifying sounds of creatures. Kraloth is also going to turn to Doran, and he's going to cast Shield of Faith. Wow. And Doran is going to get a plus two to his AC. All right, Red, you see your friend Doran gain many enchantments and bonuses. What do you do? Red, sort of sickly, still waving a little bit. He reaches out and touches Doran as well, kind of unconfused. He's like, "Ah, you got this, buddy, don't worry. And then he walks up to the side of the uh, inn. He's like, I'm going to climb it. I'm going to get a better advantage. And he starts climbing. He like grabs the side of the building and like falls back a little bit. And everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, I got this. Don't worry. And he continues. And he's going to climb up to the roof using his feline agility. And uh, he's going to get up to the roof till he has an advantageous position, which shouldn't be too difficult. 
with his feline agility, mm-hmm. you should be able to climb at least to the roof, I'm hoping. You definitely can climb to the roof. You're going to have to crest the apex of the roof in order to be able to see your combatants. But right now, yeah, you can look down and kind of catch a glimpse of one of them. Can I fire? Yeah, why not? Perfect. And when I get up to the top of the roof, Red's going to pull Dream Maker off his Dream back. Dream Maker. <laughs> oh, Dream Maker. Born to make history. Knock an arrow. And let an arrow fly. Take this, you sick bastards. I'm the sick one. Your arrows are going to sound sick, too. Cool. Mm-hmm. Roll the hit. Sick. <laughs> Radical. <laughs> awesome. First one, 10. You miss. Damn. And I'm going to attack again. Much better with a natural 20. Holy. Yeah. All right. Come on. Great job. First arrow sings wide as sick red sort of waves a little bit. He looks at B. B shoots him like an angry look. He's like, sorry, yet. had to get my aim right. And he lets the other one loose and it goes <laughs> right into the giant's eye. Wow. And you see now that you have like a pretty good vantage point on these creatures that they're a kind of giant that you've never encountered before. Bum, bum, bum. 27 damage. Woo. Wow. Nice. And Red then looks back to B and kind of nods. There you go. <laughs> Yes, Red, as you loose your arrow and it flies and hits this creature right in the face, you see its skin is green and sickly looking, its hair long, but its arms and legs are gaunt. It's tall but thin and has long claws. Interesting. So giants are one of my favorite enemies. Would I have an idea of what this is? Why don't you roll for it? Roll so it I have up. advantage to roll information it, on this one. You can do a nature check if you like. or s- Yeah, no, like eight. <laughs> Yeah, it might be too dark. You just can't really tell. You're sick, man. You can't put two and two oh. together. Are those giants or what? I don't know. Bee's like, I don't know, Dad. Should I shoot it? Of course. I always shoot first. And she looses an arrow at the creature from her perch beside you on the roof. Good boy. Fa- <laughs> I was going to say father and daughter. <laughs> um, Twelve misses, so her arrow flies wide. Damn. Yep. It's all right, darling. Doran's turn. Doran runs east around the building? Yeah, so Doran, you run east along the side of the building. And I'm going to run twice. Great, so you dash, you round the corner, and you see it, this creature. It's maybe 14 or 15 feet tall, but yeah, with these long, gangly limbs and long, sharp claws, and it turns its head. It sees you in the darkness. Yeah, so I see. I connect eyes with them. Yeah, it looks at you. All right. All right, Jack, it's your turn. Jack continues running west around the inn and hopes to get in sight of one of these things, sort of as, as they're running to the east. And, and once he can see them, hopes to try and uh, figure out what the hell they are. Yeah, definitely. So you round the corner, the other side from Doran, so you're taking from the west. And as you come up north around the side of the building, you see this hulking shape in the moonlight. Roll a nature check for me. I'd love to. That's an 18 plus 10 is 28. These are trolls. Hmm. You've read a lot about them in storybooks, but your blood runs cold because you've never seen them in the flesh before. You know that this creature is going to regenerate every round. So you're going to have to deal acid or fire damage in order to prevent that from happening. Understood. What do you want to do? Let's have Kieran fly around to the east to try and gather as much information as they can for me and share it back with me so I can... See what's going on. Kieran says, Master, they've torn a hole in the stables on the east side. And then I, I'm going to send a message into Doran's brain that says, Doran, these are trolls. They regenerate. You need to hit them with fire and acid, which really means lure them away, far enough away that I can blow them up with a fireball. Because I don't want to burn down this inn tonight. I'm just going to attack and you take care of the fire. My attacking will be as distracting as possible. I'll just do what I can. Away from the inn was the important part there. I said my answer. Click. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) That's all I got. Um, Yeah. yeah. So two of you are seen by these trolls. One of them, Doran, that caught eyes with you is just going to lumber forward and run the entire eastern length of the building to stand within five feet of you. That's his whole turn as he dashes at you. The next one... 
the one that you saw, Jack, around the far side of the building is going to just run up and get directly in your fucking face. Yikes. You can smell its fetid breath. Uh, The third does something inside the building that no one but Kieran sees, and it's very grisly and involves one of your horses. Ew. Oh, no. Oh, eating it. He's eating it, (laughs) isn't he? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Which one? Let's hope it's the one that tastes like poop. I'm going to roll a d4 right now. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. All right. Marking down the horse. Who is it? She's not going to tell us. Why not? Why not? God, sneaky bum. Just wait to open the Kinder Surprise, okay? (laughs) (laughs) You'll see what we get. (laughs) Kraloth, it's your turn. You see as this troll rounds the corner and menaces Doran as you're standing out front of this inn. What do you do? Kraloth is going to hold out his mace and spin it a few times in the air and cast a bolt of black energy toward the troll that is in front of Doran. <gasps> and it's a spell called Ray of Enfeeblement. Ooh. Just like a ray of enfeeblement. Cool. So I got a 20 to hit. Coming like a ray of enfeeblement. That does hit. Nice. Okay, so on a hit, the target deals only half damage with weapon attacks that use strength until the spell ends. Wow. Cool. The issue is, it's a concentration I just realized. So your shield of faith winks out there, Doran. Oh, no. Oh, shit. All right. My bad. That's okay. Because I've got resistance, and the damage it does is half. So it's going to be like a quarter of the damage that it does. Yeah. Red, what happens next? He's hitting me with pillows. Um. So from my position, I saw the two trolls, one go east and one go west, basically going around the building on either side, one towards door and one towards Jack. That's right. right yes. So I look over one shoulder, look over the other shoulder. I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know the third one is even there. No. And I also don't know that these things are weak to fire. No. Uh, you know what? I'll roll first again to see if I can learn anything else about these sure, trolls. Sure. Yeah. No. Yeah, you don't know. You're so foggy brained. What right now. are these you're standing things? I'm so on thick. The apex of this roof, you're going to have to choose a side to go down. Uh, I'll do Jack, I guess. Come on, B. And I walk over a little bit to where I can see the troll in front of Jack, and I'll take a shot at him. Do it. Uh, I'll use a bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark. Okay. Whenever there's an option to save either me or Jack from damage, it should always be Jack. Oh my god, I'm rolling like shit. That's a two. A no. And I'll attack again. Ah, there we go. That is a 20, dirty 20 to hit. That'll hit. Whoa. Nice. 28 damage. Wow, great job. B takes aim at the same creature and looses an arrow into the night. And she hits this one. Nice. Well done, daughter. Thanks, dad. We're doing, you're doing great. Eight piercing damage. That looked like it really hurt. That was the troll. Doran, it's your turn. You are toe-to-toe with this troll. Yeah, Doran kisses the axe head and swings it wildly at the legs of this troll. Fuck yeah! You just feel this thrill of elation through the handle as this axe is thirsting for blood it's been millennia i rolled a three i'm gonna use lucky and re-roll oh, this yeah. probably a good choice so i'm sure i'm gonna hit with a uh 15 plus 9 24 indeed nice. you do. yes doing 15 damage good stuff nice banging into the shins of this troll didn't like that um 12? No. Okay, but, I miss. I mean, close. Yeah. <laughs> With a plus nine, there's not much that's going to miss. Yeah, I'm going to save my luck. You yeah. don't hit. Okay, you going to move or you just going to hang out? No, because if I move, he's going to get a track of... Bumble's bounce! I stay on my ground. Keep him distracted. Jack, it's your turn. Jack looks up to the window where he had sent Kieran out it a minute ago and bamfs up there, just disappears in a puff of mist and appears in that window. Cool. Uh... <laughs> And then shouts up onto the roof where B and Red are and sort of out to Kraloth to give them the rest of the information. These are trolls. Acid and fire stops their regeneration. We're going to need to hit them with that once they're down. And then reaches out with a hand and tolls the dead, trying to shake the soul out of the one that's been uh, hit by these arrows. All right. Roll the hit. Uh, 
so they need to make a wisdom save for 15. 18. 18. Nothing happens. Except that my awesome troll is fine. Well, uh-huh. I'm not thrilled about it. <laughs> and I move back into the room so the troll can't see me. Cool. So this troll doesn't see anyone else right now. <laughs> Doran, you see the troll in front of you just start regaining like parts of his mm. body. The, the slash in his leg that you had inflicted starts to seal up uh. in a really disgusting way. I'm not too shocked. This is what Jack said. My intention here is to keep distracting him. Yeah, totally. So the troll that was uh, attacking you, Jack, the one that was running up on you, sees you in the window as you cast a spell to toll the dead, and then he sees you disappear, and he is excited about the chase. He wants to tear you limb from limb. He's going to make a strength check to climb this building. Oh, (laughs) shit. Oh, boy. Um, it's not great. So this creature throws himself at the wall of the inn, is unable to climb, and then just starts pulling pieces of the inn apart. He's like latching onto parts of the wall and just starts tearing boards and logs off of the inn. And you hear the destruction coming from downstairs. He's like tearing his way in to this building. Uh, You hear another frantic neigh coming from the stable in the crunch and then another uh, silence very foreboding mm. and Doran the troll in front of you swings to attack you with his vicious claws mm. that's a three and a four for his oh, claws nice. and then he's going to try to bite you that'll probably do it uh, 22 to hit you Yep. you take Seven piercing damage. Seven divided by two divided by two. How divided by two divided by two? Resistance and rate of enfeeblement. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. So seven divided by two is three. three. Divided by two. So he does one damage? One One damage. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There we go. You see a look of confusion cross his face. He he bites you and his teeth kind of just rebound as if you were a particularly springy piece of calamari. (laughs) So now he can do a... uh, uh, constitution saving throw Oh, against Ray of Enfeeblement. Uh, 17? That does it. So just one round. He's oh. no longer enfeebled. Hey, it was worth it. Mm. Worth it was worth it. That was fantastic. Thanks. Okay, cool. So, Kraloth, what do you do now? So, Kraloth sees Jack disappear uh-huh. and hears the toll of the dead and he shakes his head and says, oh yeah, he can do that. <laughs> Kraloth is going to cast a couple spells. I cast Spiritual Weapon as a regular level two mm-hmm. in front of the troll, and I'm going to swipe with it. And that is a 12 to hit. You miss. And then I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on this troll as well. It's a nine. Oh, okay. So it hits. How much damage? 12 points of damage. Great. All right, Kraloth, your scythe hovers in the air. Red, what do you do? Red sort of looks at the troll down below and Jack, who's just misty-stepped. Uh, Jack said we need to light these things on fire. Uh, I think I have uh, one of those jars of oil in my pack, but I, you keep shooting that one. And he turns to the east where that other troll seems to be devouring our horses mm-hmm. to the woods that are over there. And he says... Steven! What? From the bushes, you (laughs) see like a little movement and out just walks like a goat. What? You see this little gray goat with a long beard and black eyes. And this goat just sort of walks out and Red says, Steven, see if you can help the horses. And uh, he's going to move 60 feet towards the uh, (laughs) Scree, aka Screven is my bloodhawk. This is Steven, the goat. So he's... The goat just starts, ga- he kind of nods <laughs> and runs towards the uh, <laughs> towards the uh, barn and just, he's going to headbutt the fuck out of that troll. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> I believe in you, Steven. With fire, right? Why don't you bring something like a phoenix? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no. So he runs at him with an 11. Yeah, I'm sorry, Steven. I think he bumps into him. He doesn't hurt him. Just like... <clears throat> Do what you can, Steven. Great. Throwing down Screven. Steven. Steven. Screven is the blood hawk. 
Oh, man. It's B's turn. She's going to continue shooting arrows at the troll that's trying to claw his way in through the bottom floor of this inn. That hits. And she's going to deal nine piercing damage. Nice. Nice one, B. Doran, it's your turn. You are up next to this troll and a magical scythe has appeared beside you. You know your buddy Kraloth is looking out for you. Mm -hmm. What do you do? All right, then I attack twice then. The troll in front of me, uh, continuing to distract it as much as possible. So Great. Number one, I hit it with a 21. Yes, you do. Doing oh, full damage, so that's uh, eighteen damage. Excellent. Nice. And then another swing, doing sixteen to hit. Yep, that hits. Doing thirteen damage. Gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous is right. This is two excellent hits. Jack, it's your turn. Jack takes a minute to concoct a plan with Kieran. Are there any like anywhere in the inn? Did we notice lanterns lit? Candles lit, anything that had fire somewhere. There was a fire in the hearth downstairs. You're not sure if it's still lit at this time of night. Mm, true that. Yeah. Jack is going to, Kieran, get invisible, go get some fire and send them towards the hearth. Once they're invisible, if they need hands to do it, they can not be a raven, but he's pretty cagey about the whole thing, so long as they're invisible. And is going to send them inside to go do that while he... Is now taking that step back, feels a little bit more, you know, remembers all the sorts of crazy things he can do with his magic. He's a lore master. He has all the spell secrets. He can turn a spell that does force damage into fire damage and does so, conjuring three magical darts of fire in front of him that zip down and out the side of the building and strike this troll with fire. Nice. Marvelous. And that's five plus four plus four is 13 fire damage. Cool. You have beflamed him. Yeah. It's the troll's turns. Uh, Doran, you see as the troll in front of you's flesh starts to knit back together from your mighty hits. Based on observation, can I tell how many hit points it's regaining? Roll a medicine check. 16. He's regaining about 10 hit points every round. Okay. He swipes at you with his terrifying claws. Clow. His clothes. He's no longer under the influence of uh, enfeeblement. Right, but I'm still resistant to bludgeoning, piercing. You got that stone skin. 23, he yep. hits you with one claw. Yep. And then uh, 22 with a bite. Okay, yeah. Two, two, he hits both times. So he deals 15 slashing damage with his claw. Okay. Six piercing damage with a bite. And then he misses you with another claw. And I am going to use my repost. Okay. And I hit. I got ten with my superior die. You add the superior die to the tax wow. damage roll. Okay. So excellent. Now he just needs to hit. Yeah. You have inspiration. Well, you have lucky too, I guess. Yeah. But I'm going to use my inspiration because let's do it. Oh, that was worth it with a twenty-five to hit. Nice. nice. Yeah, you hit. Well done. Doing 16 plus 20, so 26 damage. Wow. Oh, whoa, whoa. Nice. Good stuff. This is big nice. damage for you, Doran. Orc Splitter helps me to aim at the exact spot that's starting to heal up, and I just, like, gash it wide open. Yeah, she's, like, egging you on. And, and the, you see the bone shatter. Yeah, bit. like, both of you are kind of... It's a feedback loop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. Steven watches as the <laughs> troll in front of him turns from his meal of horse to attack him. Steven. Would he, though? It's kind of funny to think. Like, does, this does, like, goat oh. just like butts him in yeah. the side. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm picturing like... From the goat's perspective, like yeah. two feet from the ground, you see, like looking at the troll's knee. I mean, that's what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to stop him from eating the yeah, horses. Yeah, he is. So he's going to try to claw Steven twice. Uh, that's a two and a three. Hey. This is the best because he turns around and sees Steven and he's just like chewing. It's like this big vacant dead eyes. And then it swipes and Steven like hops to the right. And then he's like, and he swipes again. And Stephen like hops to the left. And then those dead, dull eyes narrow. And you see there's a sharp cleverness behind them. 
Just rolled another two for the bite. Oh my so, yes. Steven, you're fine. There <laughs> you go, Steven. Blessed goat. <laughs> Beasts of burden, um, savior. The other troll is going to continue trying to tear his way into the inn, abandoning his climbing. And he, yeah, he tears a hole in the inn and mm. he moves into the common room. Oh, Jesus. Kieran sees him in the same room as him now. Oh, this could actually be sort of advantageous. So, the end out. I mean, we have one troll in the common room with Kieran. We have Jack on the second floor looking out of a broken window. Crayloth is around the front of the inn, sort of observing Doran. And then Stephen, <laughs> the goat, is keeping the other troll busy. Um, and then finally, Red and B are on the roof of the inn, just firing down at everyone. It's Kraloth's turn. What do you do, Kraloth? Damn, trolls messing with my turn. Okay. Kraloth is going to, I mean, he hears the troll coming around through the building. And Kraloth is going to move around Doran, but maintain his distance. And he's going to cast Sacred Flame and, as a bonus action, swing his scythe again. Cool. So, dexterity check for me, please. 16. Um, that is going to be good, I believe. I think I'm 15. So both my attacks miss. Oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Greyloth. Uh, it happens. Red, it's your turn. All right. Steven, you got this, buddy. Red almost says to himself. You hear from down below. Bleh. And uh, Steven's going to pull back. Uh, he's going to use his action to disengage. Oh, okay. And he's going to run going to run south uh, towards Dorn. That's awesome. Yeah. It's nice, like, Steve. Head butts him and then fucking runs. <laughs> I've never been rooting for a creature or character any more than, than Steven right now. Yeah. Not any one of you, no. <laughs> he moves uh, He moves 60 feet. Yeah, they're fast fuckers. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> land only. He's got 30 feet. But he does have a climb. Speed, Ooh. of course, yeah, of course. Mountain goats, goats climb so really good. well. Yeah, maybe he will. Yeah. Maybe so. Stephen will disengage. Uh-huh. He'll run south a little bit, and then he's gonna start climbing. There's like an awning on the yeah. side of the building. Yeah. And oh, like, there's like those mountain goats climbing a sheer cliff. Yeah, like, just up the uh-huh. He's uh-huh. like climbing the bricks. He's literally trolling this troll. He's like. Burr. And as he like gets up to the top, Stephen and Red lock eyes, and Stephen's like. Burr. And Red's like, good job, buddy. And Red is going to take a shot at the only other troll that he can see right now. Sure, the one that's engaged with Doran. Yeah. I mean, you know, interspecies relationships is common with Doran. And if they're engaged, he's not going to stand in the way. (laughs) This is going to be with a sharpshooter penalty. Natural 20! No way! Whoa! Ah, That's awesome. Excellent. No shaming dice tonight. Hmm? No way. 29 damage. Wow. Holy the troll <laughs> falls. Light that bastard on fire. And then I turn to B and I say, B, get the oil out of your pack. I'm going to go for the other bastard. And I'm going to move down. Uh, I have not moved in a few rounds, so I have my feline agility. Yes, you do. And I'm going to basically do the inverse of what I first did, uh, leaving from the front door to get to the roof. And I'm going to go back down. And from the doorway, I'm hoping that I can lean in and fire my second attack at the other troll. Yeah, you certainly can. As you approach the threshold of this doorway, you lean in and you see another troll in and the I say, main room. Knock, knock, buddy! And I'm going to fire at him. You got this. No. Uh, 13? No. No. Was but you do draw his attention. <laughs> so that's always good. Always good. And I say, uh, hi! <laughs> Steven? <laughs> B runs to the southeast edge of the roof that's looking over where the troll has fallen and Doran is standing over it. And she roots through her adventurer's pack. She grabs her flask of oil, throws it down on the creature, and then just like drops a fucking match. Nice. Nice. And walks away slow motion. Yep. Yeah, that's a 19 on the dice. She hits him square in the Beautiful. troll face. Nice. And he did. The, nice. the match falls into the troll's nostril. Doran, it's your turn. 
There's a pile of burning troll directly in front of you, Doran. So Doran's going to go and join you guys in battle and try and, I guess, clamor over you guys in the front door and yeah. join the so battle. So you come up the beside Red. <laughs> yeah, I join, join Red at the front door. Thanks, buddy. Come here, trolly, trolly. <laughs> Jack, it's your turn. You're on the second floor of this inn. Yeah, Jack dashes across the inn towards the stairs and runs mm-hmm. down the stairs like thump, 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 thump to get you know, into, into the main room and come face to face with this troll uh, where he like holds his hand out and three vials of acid appear in his hand and he clenches them in his fist and throws them and they just magically empowered zap across the room smashing into this thing. Magic missiles of acid. Zap. Uh, zap. Cool. 12. Acid damage. Oh my God. And Kieran can see the hearth now? Yes. Is there is there a towel or something that they could snatch in their talons and then get lit on fire? So they got a flaming towel in their talons? Yeah, Kieran can go behind the bar area and find like a random tea towel and then fly over to the hearth and sort of wait until it catches on fire as a turn. Beautiful. So he'll have a flaming rag for next turn. That's perfect. Cool. It's the troll's turn. Damn trolls. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, the troll that you just acided is going to run over to you and attack you. Acided. Yeah. Here we go. That sucks. Two claws. We have two 20s. Dirty. Oh, no. Uh, all right. Nothing I can do. And then a claw for 22. Oh, man. All right. The first claw deals 11 slashing damage. Uh oh. All right. Oh. The second claw deals 14 slashing damage. Oh, Uh-oh. Okay. shit. The fight, seven piercing damage. So Whoa. 33. Yeah, Beauty. he just yeah. tears you to shreds. I'm still standing better than I ever did. Oh, yeah. You guys hear the other troll moving around. As it's clawing at me and biting my... Whole body. Biting my Your everything. Your whole situation. Yeah, I think I'm just going to... Ooh. Yeah. What? I don't think I'm gonna. Yell. I was I was gonna yell something at it in giant, but I cool think of a interruption. Thing, so I I Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Joe, can you take Sorry, that again? The whole, the whole flow. <laughs> I like the reminder that you're getting bitten all over though. Uh, <laughs> ouch! Ouch! The other I just needed to picture it for a minute. Yeah, the other troll uh, moves around outside. You can hear it, and uh, it climbs the building and tries to fit its body in through the broken window that the imp entered through. Uh, 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 Steven's up on the roof, correct? Hmm. The troll is on the second story of the inn, sort of like on the balcony, I guess, looking down into this main room. Kraloth, it's your turn. You are, where the fuck are you? Yeah, yeah. Kraloth is kind of, uh, he's back on the road. He's packed up his stuff. He's, uh, he's starting a new life. <laughs> yeah. He got his here. ring from Doran. Hey, are there? <laughs> he got what it's he needs. what's happening here. Uh-huh. Are there any windows on the front of this building? Or is it just one? There's one window on the front of the building. You see Jack get murderized. Okay. Just massacred. Yeah. I hear it and I run forward and uh, get right up next to the window and I'm going to mm-hmm. turn around and I'm going to cast Sanctuary on Jack. Oh, nice. nice. So uh, you are now warded. Anybody who tries to attack you is going to have to make a wisdom saving throw. Beautiful. Um, if you attack this creature, yeah. then it's ended. So to, just on the turn order though, they've already gone. I go before yes. them again. So if I am to get they're not going to get a chance to attack me before I do something. Unless like you find another way to attack so that you're not attacking or you're attacking yeah. through somebody else or... Don't worry, guys. I'll kill them before that happens. Cool. Sanctuary I is it. cast. Sanctuary. And um, then I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on this mofo in front of Jack. Cool. Ooh, that's a 17. Damn it, he saves. Shit. Cool. Red, it's your turn. I'm going to step in the doorway and I'm going to shoot the motherfucker. That's hurting my friend. You leave him alone, you bastard. Turning Jack into ribbons. (laughs) And I missed the first shot. I say, sorry, my nose is still stuffed. With a three. (laughs) And I aim again. I'm going to move, relax. 15 to hit? Yes. Perfect. 29 damage. He's dead. Nice. Yeah, nice. 
Oh. <laughs> All that with a cold. <laughs> This gangly green body falls to the ground and then the acid <laughs> sizzles through his flesh. And then I'm going to walk into the room and I'm going to get behind some cover and I'm going to say, all right, Stephen and the motherfucker. And Stephen from the roof is going to do a real badass move that we've been practicing for a few weeks. Aww. And he's going to hop to the edge mm-hmm. with two hooves, hook them over the side, and then mm-hmm. swing in through that same window that the troll just broke into. And he's going <laughs> to kick the thing from behind <laughs> in the face. <laughs> I wish I had inspiration because I would totally use it at this point. I'll use it on you. Good. I'll send you inspiration. Yeah? Yeah, I'll give you my inspiration. Oh, nice. Thank I, oh, you. I'll give, I'll give, right. I give it to Steven. Steven. Oh, yeah. listen. He earned yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of how goats sound. Go. That is a <laughs> sixteen a hit. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. Steven. Steven. Good Steven. Good goat. You got this. Troll Slayer. Fourteen damage. Very good. Steven Troll Stomper. And uh he lands behind him and gives a little <laughs> and looks at him with evil eyes. Gross. Uh, B is on the roof. I think she's going to probably climb down back through the way that she climbed up. So she's going to go across the roof. She's going to use her feline agility, climb back down through the window in her room of the second floor and end up on the second floor. And I think that's her turn. She's going to dash. Cool. Yeah. So now she's like kind of across the hall from where the troll is. And she sees Stephen, and she winks at him. That's your brother. (laughs) (laughs) Doran, it's your turn. (laughs) You hear the most confusing and terrifying noises coming from within this inn. Doran is going to run in. Yeah. So I run in up the stairs. Yep. And now that's my full movement. That's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, I'm up the stairs. (laughs) Doran's like running up the stairs. Doran's been doing a lot of running this fight. I love it. He's like, I'll run here. I run there. Have my life. I'm running. (laughs) Jack, it's your turn. What happens next? Jack is bloody and bit and is going to march over to the stairs. He's not fucking around anymore. He's going to get that troll so he can see him. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then he's going to extend a finger and have these arrows of force just appear around him. And he's casting magic missile as the highest level he can. Ooh. And he's goosing it with all the extra magical jazz he's got with him. So spending a level four and a level one spell slot to add. Oh, wow. 2d10 plus uh, d4 plus one wow. for every wow. one of these arrows. Uh-huh. And there's six of them. <gasps> Holy shit. Wow. 20. That's it. And then Kieran flies up with the flaming towel and drops it on the thing's face. <laughs> <laughs> and Steven kicks it out the window. Yeah, Steven kicks it out the window and then it explodes into fireworks. Steven looks back down to Red and goes, ah! I guess he ate something that didn't agree with him. Yeah, me. Good job, Steven. Oh, guys. Yeah, Kraloth is going to move over, yeah. run over to the stables and check on the horses. Me too. Red is hot on Kraloth's heels uh, with Steven behind trying to see which horses have made it. I'm so sorry to tell you, but two of your horses have perished. (gasps) After you enter the stables, Red, you see that the bodies of Amakir and Asta are both torn limb from limb. I turn around. I'm like, no! (laughs) Kraloth. Kraloth, yeah. What about Revivify? You have spells for this, don't you? I've never tried it on a horse before. Wouldn't it be cheaper to buy a new horse? But these are these are Amakir and Asta, and they're the special horses from the special town. But we can only revive one, guys. It looks like I've got about 20 seconds on one of them and about 25 seconds on the other. So uh, who's it going to be? Just, Kraloth, do what you do. Please. Kraloth, please. Kraloth walks in with the the bag of diamonds, and uh, he kneels down next to Amakir and casts Revivify. (gasps) You're you're going to do Asta now, right? Kraloth? Asta's over there, right? I'm sorry, Red. I, uh... (sighs) 
I think Red walks in past Kraloth and kneels next to Asta, and you see for the first time Red cry. He just he just starts bawling like quietly to himself, kneeling next to his fallen horse. Like he talked to this horse. He talked to this animal. Yeah. And uh Kraloth uh, just stands there as Amakir starts to stir and he looks down at Amakir and uh, doesn't cry looks more perplexed and then he walks out of the stable Jack almost followed them over there but couldn't stand the idea of Amakir being dead and did, just didn't want, would rather not know and so he's shouting for the innkeeper Tamerlin? Yeah, Tamerlin comes in from her room in the back where she had been cowering away from all this danger. What happened? Trolls. You're, you're alive. That's I'm so glad. Oh, gods. Ugh. They've been throughout the countryside, but I never thought they would come here. I'm glad you're alive. Well, thank you so much for everything. Um, yeah, Jack, his intention is entirely drifted. He's just trying to steal himself to figure if he can go walk over to the stables. Limp outside to go join everybody else. Yeah, and as uh, Jack is coming out the side of the building, Kraloth walks by him and uh, pats him on the shoulder and nods and keeps on going towards the inn. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go turn the corner and just relief washes over my face when I see Amakir up and, and I'm going to lead her out of the stable and and I guess see Red. Yeah, I mean, Red's just literally kneeling in the center of the stable, weeping quietly. Red, I'm I'm so sorry. Uh, and I'll come over and, and just sit next to you. I'm so sorry. And I think he, I think when you join him, he stands up and brushes like a tear from his eye. And he's like, good. And walks out. Meanwhile, Kraloth is walking up the stairs and he's got his hand to his head and he's very quietly muttering to himself and just saying, restore the balance. Restore, restore the balance. Get it all balanced out and it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. And he's kind of in a daze. He walks straight into Jack's room. He, he passed Orin and Doran downstairs. And he continues to mutter to himself as he kneels down next to Jack's bag and reaches in. And what do you, what do you have there? <laughs> uh, wizards live a long time. So I uncovered a basement that hadn't been opened in a long time. And it was the first like archaeological dig Jack ever did was look through all of this old stuff that had been sealed away for a long time. And something he took out of there was the Sunstaff medallion, this like treasured symbol of this old wizard um, that he's always sort of kept with him as inspiration. And Kraloth remembers Jack telling him that in those exact words, and he knows exactly what to reach for. And it's almost as if now he's intentionally reaching for something that is of emotional value. As soon as he pulls it from the bag and grasps it in his hand, he stops muttering and he stands up. Doran's like walking around like picking up stuff that's fallen over and uh, you could see him putting some of the boards that have fallen off the wall kind of covering some of the holes um, you know we we should probably get some sleep it's uh it's the middle of the night I I don't think we're gonna be getting much more done and uh, it's 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 been a it's been a pretty emotional uh, emotional evening on top of the fighting so I, 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 I would suggest maybe, uh, in looking at Red, he says, uh, I think some of us need a little bit of rest. Did you want to come inside, Dad? Sure. And, uh, and he'll head inside, sort of past Jack and whatever else. Morning breaks. It's cold in here. There are holes in this building now. I think, having not really slept much, Red wakes B up early and the two go hunting. I, I think he's getting away from this place. Hmm. So yeah, so Jack then, you wake up and maybe you rouse as they move around the room in the darkness, gathering their things. Mm -hmm. So Kraloth has also gotten up and left the inn quietly before anyone else could notice. And uh, he, he walks outside and he begins to walk just in a direction into the forest. Sure. A kilometer away. And he gets to this little clearing with a kind of semi-frozen trickling brook. And he drops 
a sack on the ground. Is this what you wanted from me? There's no answer. And then Kraloth begins to walk away. And he turns around and walks back to the bag and he sits down and he says, well, I'll explain it to you. He opens up the bag and he pulls out a ring. This belongs to one of the strongest people I know. Bravest. Worth a lot. Stone hearts never bleed. Yeah. Then he reaches in again and he pulls out a medallion that Jack has showed him before just beautifully polished and well maintained a little worn but as perfectly maintained as it possibly can be jack has explained this to me and it's the impetus to what made him seek out adventure in the first place and he puts that down and then he pulls out a nice quill and a necklace from b and He looks at the two of them and says, I don't know them all too well, but I imagine these fetch a good amount for the amount they care about them. And then he puts them down. And he sits there, staring at the water trickling past. And lastly, from my last companion, I knew I wasn't going to be able to take from physically. And so from red, I took Asta. And with a rough voice and stiff motions, he stands up and he walks away. <laughs> Goodbye, horsey. I'm sure we'll meet again. And we'll see you soon, too. Thank you once again to our great Old One Patreon supporters, Megan Shepardson, Adam Fry, Alistair King, and Christopher Ryan Evans. See you soon! Like shit tonight. Like shit.